everyone I'm glad you're here thank you very much for joining me and thank you for your support there's been a lot of talk about the possible coming eruption of Campifloria there in the town of Naples Italy let me bring this out and I'll show you the last time I believe there was a volcanic eruption was in 1944 which was Mount Vesuvius um, you may know that from the history of Pompeii. And there's a lot of interesting things that have been happening here um, in Naples, Italy, for some geologists to issue a warning that an eruption may be coming. They still cannot predict when a volcano is going to erupt, but they are learning more and more things. The last time Campi Flagre, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, erupted was in 1538. More than 1 1.5 million people live above, above the vast underground complex, and a half a million people have their homes inside its seven mile long caldera, which was formed after an enormous eruption uh, 39,000 years ago. If Campi Flagre were to reenact its largest previous eruption, it would punch molten rock and volcanic gases high into the stratosphere, unleash a hundred foot high tsunami, and spread a plume of sulfur and toxic ash that could plunge the earth into global winter for years. That would end up killing crops and causing mass extinctions. Yeah, people would starve to death. The peer reviewed newest research was published in the Journal of Communications, Earth and Environment. Here we have an image showing uh, where the ash fallout would probably extend to and for pyroclastic flows. This is from that research paper. Also, I have an image of showing deflation and inflation. A lot what's going on here reminds me of Yellowstone. Images A and B are from dates dating 1992 to 2002, and I'll make this larger for you. This is deflation. And then we'll come down here, and this is when they started having inflation. And down here is what it's currently showing. Um, what's interesting here is first we had inflation. And you can see now that it's moved towards the, uh, oh, probably the north eastern part of Naples Bay. So over here on the right, that would be deflation. But then the deflation moved over here and the inflation moved towards the east. So images C, D, E and F, if you look at the green area and the blue area, that is inflation. Let's see, D, the image D is from 2003 to 2010. Image E is from 2011 to 2021. And this is what it's currently showing. Rather confusing, here's another image when you would expect uh, the red to be inflation and the green to be deflation but it's actually the opposite red is deflation green is inflation and these are from the same dates let me bring this down for you so the green and the blue is actually inflation you can see it up here um, slightly on b so that one there would be from 1992 to 2002 and come back down this one here would be the recent um, image of inflation you can see it's so if you take a bowl and you tip it over the top would be the highest which is this blue and green and then the side of the bowl would be lower in elevation which would be this orangish red color here's another image of the bay According to their study, Campi for Gray is moving closer to a rupture. The study lead author, Christopher Kilburn 
a professor of earth science at the University College of London, said in a statement. However, he does caution that it does not mean an eruption is guaranteed. The researcher's model suggests that the crust beneath Camp Fergie, Fergie, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, is breaking, not bending under pressure. And that's what Yellowstone's been doing. And I've been talking about the popping of the rock beneath the earth. The churn of the underground gases and magma has been slowly flexing and weakening Campy Fergray's uh, crust since the 1950s, reducing its tessellar, you know, the stretchy movement. It can't stretch anymore. It's not springy. And that stretchy movement is only a third of what it was in 1984, according to the study. Here we have an image of Mount Vesuvius when it erupted in 1944. Then, just like now, yeah, they built all the way up to the Caldera Rim. Lots of towns, small little villages, homes, and businesses. So going back to the popping, the breaking of the rock. That means that even though the earthquakes in the region are not as powerful as they were in the 1980s, the weaker rock has the potential to rupture under smaller strains, giving seismologists fewer detectable earthquakes and people less notice to evacuate. Recently, we had um, Kilauea eruption, and I showed you how uh, there was no large earthquakes as a warning before that one erupted this week. And recent studies for the Icelandic um, eruption, the same thing happened there. It went quiet and they actually didn't detect any earthquakes before it erupted. The study used a model of volcano fracturing to interpret the pattern of earthquakes and ground uplift. There has been tens of thousands of earthquakes around the volcano and in the town of Pozzoli, which rests on top of Camp Fergre, has been uplifted by about 13 feet as a result of these earthquakes. The quakes and rising earth have stretched parts of the volcano nearly to a breaking point, according to the news release about the study and the ground seems to be breaking rather than bending. Any number of these craters actually could erupt. Here we have an image of Solfaterra crater. Let me bring this down and you can see how we got the mixing of the gases and magma and different fluids. The uplift, now this is real interesting comparing it to the research and study and things I've been showing at Yellowstone. The uplifts have been accompanied by nearly 31,000 brittle failure earthquakes. That's where the ground is popping and cracking, which are commonly described as volcanic tectonic earthquakes. And here is an image of volcanic tectonic earthquake, which we've been seeing there at Yellowstone. And they have several different examples of different earthquakes here in this location. Let me make this bigger and I'll bring this up for you so you can see. Okay, volcanic tectonic. Remember, it's still got the sharpened points and I talked about tectonic movement of the earthquakes. They also have an image here of low frequency earthquakes, uh, what they call hybrid earthquakes, low frequency earthquakes, which would be uh, harmonic tremors, and then the bottom one, um, yeah, the uh, slow moving tremors. Yeah, I've talked about that because we've been seeing all of this at Yellowstone. See how they can learn things about volcanoes, not just from one location, but multiple locations. So earthquakes here by um, Mount Fergie, although small in number, have reached a magnitude of four. 78% uh, of the events have a magnitude 2.5 or less. About 80% had epicenters along the onshore side of the coastline. Solfaterra and Mount Nuvio. The trend follows the fault system of La Starzia, where marine terraces show that a relative uplift displacement 
as much as 40 meters, which is about 131 feet, occurred on the landward side between 8,000 and 4,000 years ago. So I believe that would be down over here somewhere. That's an interesting um, paper that I read about the 1538 Mount Nubio eruption. I'll give you a link to this paper because it talks about how long um, the uplift was occurring prior to the eruption. From the early 1530s, accompanied by unusual seismicity, that reached a first climax in the spring of 1534. Still more, more earthquakes uplifted to about 7 meters. That would be about 23 feet, a value that is not exaggerated. Uplift by up to 6 meters occurred during the night preceding the 1994 eruption um, of rubble in Papua New Guinea. So I'm going to show you this area here. At about 9 o'clock on September 29th, a crack opened up in the area of maximum uplift next to the ancient Roman settlement of Tripergol. According to contemporary sources, the newly opened vent emitted vast amount of pumice, fire, and black and white smoke. Much of the ejected fell as muddy ash, indicating that water played a significant role in the initial stage of the eruption. So that would be this area right here. And this is the shoreline. And this is the lake. And evidently that ancient Roman city is somewhere over here. Where it opened up and you know, all that magma and pumice came out. Yeah, evidently the lake was actually larger than what it is now. It probably filled in with uh, magma and pumice to become smaller. Evidently, too, there's been over um, 600 earthquakes. Let me find the area. That would be over here. Um, 600 earthquakes in just April alone. That's where I got the little red triangles. Yeah, they still cannot predict when a volcano is going to erupt. And as I've said, geology is probably one of the sciences that's probably about 50 years behind, if not more, compared to other sciences. But even with the new information about, yeah, the tremors and the type of tremors that they've been having here and the breaking, how brittle the ground is getting. I've talked about this, how it's like glass. So basically, it would not take a large earthquake to cause an eruption. Yeah, see how it compares to other uh, volcanoes like the one in Hawaii, the one in Iceland. And yeah, hopefully Yellowstone doesn't ever go off. But you can see we got multiple um, calderas in this location. And then over here was the one in 1944. They were just... Yeah, coming out of the war, I believe, and um, the army was there and helped clear out some of the roads. And yeah, people waited until the last minute to evacuate. A lot of them only being able to get a minimum amount of their possessions. I found an old newsreel clip that's on um, YouTube. I'll give you a link to that below also of its eruption and showing how the people evacuated yeah at the very last moment um military aircraft was just torn to shreds when this went off yeah and i'm sure many of you know about um pompeii and the bodies that have been turned to stone um yeah from that terrifying eruption yeah the people fled uh, going down to the coast and the gases actually engulfed them and they died from the gases in caves um, that they had seek to um, hide in waiting for rescue um, from boats but um, yeah they didn't make it the gases killed them so always be prepared for a disaster always have a plan 
Yeah, there's a lot we do not know. And please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.